From the first buds to the moment the blossoms fall to the ground, there's a national obsession with cherry blossoms. What's all the excitement about? To find out, we left Tokyo and headed to Kawaguchiko. It's located a couple of hours away by train or bus, and it's right at the base of Mount Fuji. Getting out of Tokyo and riding through the countryside is really relaxing. As Fujisan gets bigger and bigger, so does the excitement. No matter how many times I see Mount Fuji, I get excited. We're almost there. Kawaguchiko. The air is fresh and the sounds of honking cars in construction are a couple of hours away in Tokyo. It's replaced by singing birds, boats on water, and the wind through the trees. The sakura here are magnificent. The white blossoms are a striking contrast to the mountains and lake. Cherry blossoms with a view of Mount Fuji. Both are icons of Japan, and putting them together is truly something special. Mount Fuji is usually covered in clouds. Japan is an island, and the weather can change rapidly, especially at elevation. But in the early spring, the air is cool enough to keep the skies clear. There's a path around the lake, and this strip is all sakura. It's relaxing here, and even on the weekends, it's easy to enjoy both the view and the surrounding nature. Looking at Fujisan covered in snow, I'm reminded of the winter that ended down here, and the winter still going on up there. Spring is a time of new possibilities. Let's jump on the train and head to another mountain location, this time Nara in the Kansai region. Yoshinoyama is the destination, and it's accessible by local train from Kyoto and Osaka. The cable car is the oldest in Japan. If the word old scares you, try hiking up. There are a lot of local business selling handmade goods, and owners welcome tourists. Well, most of the time. I was walking by this shop, I saw this big pink ice cream and wondered, what taste is that? What flavor? It happens to be Sakura flavored ice cream. It's pink, definitely. It's sweet and kind of flowery. I guess that's what a Sakura should taste like. But I found if you walk around Yoshinoyama, there are a lot of other foods that are made with Sakura. It's pretty interesting. There are loads of boxed sweets prepared as gift packs for friends, family, and coworkers. Try Sakura liqueur. It's pink and sweet, and the floating sakura blossoms in the bottom make the bottle scream springtime. This tent is selling locally made sushi. What's the catch? Well, it's wrapped in a salty sakura tree leaf. It's the perfect snack for the hiking trail. This shop sells sakura yokan, a thick jelly dessert made from red bean paste. It has the cherry blossom inside the jelly layer, preserved and ready to eat. There's the original red bean flavor and a matcha green tea variant. Both are delicious. One bite in a yokan, and it'll take you back to the Japanese countryside. On my way up, I stopped into a local coffee shop. 
Many are situated right on the edge of a cliff and offer amazing views. Yoshinoyama is considered to be the number one spot in all of Japan for viewing the cherry blossoms. It's said that the first sakura trees were planted here over 1300 years ago. The area is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site with many sacred shrines and temples and over 30,000 sakura trees. The many varieties of sakura here give off many different colors of blossoms and leaves. As the season comes to an end, wind blows the blossoms off the branches and leaves sprout through. The sakura on Yoshinoyama were planted in four groves along the mountainside, each blooming later in the season as you get to higher elevations. The top is a perfect place for a hanami party, picnicking under the cherry blossoms. Kami Sembon, the upper 1,000 trees, is a beautiful spectacle to see. It's a patch of springtime colors and a highlight of the area. And whether you're in Tokyo, your own neighborhood, or out in the countryside, between March and April, enjoy the cherry blossoms. <laughs>